My name is Stephen Smith, CPA, owner of Controllership Solutions at quickencoach.com and a Quicken expert. In this video, aimed at new users who have never used Quicken before, we're going to talk about selecting which Quicken product is right for them, as well as how to install Quicken for beginners and connecting your first bank account. When you come to quicken.com, you're going to see a lot of options, a lot of menus, and a lot of different flavors of Quicken. A few high-level things. There's Quicken for Mac, Quicken for PC, and there's Quicken Simplify. In short, Quicken Simplify is an online product. Quicken Mac is for Mac users, and there's only one version of the Quicken Mac, and there is Quicken for PC, also known as Quicken Classic, which has three flavors. The three flavors being Deluxe, Premier, and Home and Business. Here's my quick recap on each of them. I am a longtime Quicken user, and I prefer Quicken Classic, which is the Quicken for PC users. It needs to be on a PC. It has a web integration, but it is primarily a desktop software product for a single user. Quicken does a great job of explaining to you the differences between each of these different flavors of Quicken. In short, in summary, other than cost, which escalates between $6.49 a month, $8.49 a month, and then the business, which I believe is $11.99 a month, there are some feature requests. Now, all of these fees are extremely reasonable in, in, my, in my opinion, and you get very good value from this from the software. Deluxe. Deluxe is the basic Quicken for PC product and is perfect for people who want to do just spending and tracking and budgeting. Now, if you are that my, if you are using that, you have a choice between Quicken Deluxe and Quicken Simplify. Simplify and Deluxe are quite comparable, except Quicken Simplify is an online product and is a modern interface, whereas Deluxe is the Quicken Classic desktop pro product. If you are a little more sophisticated when it comes to your investments, I would encourage you to upgrade to Quicken Classic Premier. You're going to get a little bit better reporting and a little bit better functionality in the investment department. You're also going to get plugins and information for Morningstar and things like that. It's about 25 extra bucks a year. It's pretty worth it. If you are a business, and I say when I say business, if you have a rental property or two, if you're a consultant, if you have a side job, if you have a home business, Airbnb, that kind of stuff, then classic business and personal is the flavor that you would want. Now, do not confuse using Quicken Business and Personal with using QuickBooks. And I have another video on the differences between Quicken and QuickBooks. If you start to get involved with accounts receivable and payroll and a number of other issues, I think you're going to very quickly stretch the limits of Quicken Business and Personal. In that case, I would recommend using QuickBooks. But for small businesses, small uh, trusts or rental properties, Quicken Business and Personal should work just fine. And finally, there is Quicken Simplify. Again, this is online. I believe this is a great thing for people who are used to their phones, that want to use it on their phones, that want that mobile aspect of it, and that are really just looking to track their spend. Utilities, Starbucks, entertainment, recreation, etc. So once you've decided on what Quicken product you want to invest in, then it comes to purchasing. Keep in mind that this is a subscription. There's a lot of promotions. You can get 50% off the first year and then it's going to recur. They bill you annually. But then you, you do need to log in. There is no 2022, 2023, 2024. It is now a subscription-based product. You need to buy it. 
the first step is to create an account and you would create an account with your profile and all of your information. Give you your credit card, it is a subscription, so they're going to charge you annually. It's a monthly price, but they charge you annually. It's usually discounted heavily for new users, and then it just auto-renews auto because the value, is, the value is there. And once you've created this account, you're gonna be able to log into a portal, and you're going to download the software. So what that looks like for me, is coming into my Quicken account. That's not Quicken.com, that's Quicken Online. I am a subscriber of Quicken Classic. Specifically, I subscribe to the home and business flavor. And I'm going to download Quicken for Windows. There's two options here, Quicken for Windows, Quicken for Mac. I just downloaded and I'm going to install just like any software program would. Here we are, next install. Install Quicken. It's going to ask where I would like to install it. I will install it in my C drive. It will install. And this may take several minutes depending on your download speed. And after a few short minutes of downloading and extracting and doing what Windows does, we now come to a sign in page where you would sign in with your credentials. And let's say we're new to Quicken and the first thing it's going to ask do we want to sync I don't personally think we need to sync so we're going to keep that off and add account this is the number one reason you would use Quicken is for to integrate and to aggregate all of your different bank accounts credit card accounts and brokerage accounts. This is the most powerful feature of Quicken because it brings all your financial activity into a software where you can categorize it and track it and keep, keep and take a look at things on an aggregated basis. Once we're in Quicken, we have a new Quicken file. This is a blank file. We've just downloaded it. We have nothing in our account list, but the first thing we need to do is add an account. And there's one way to do it. It can prompt you right in the beginning. You can hit the plus key here if you don't hit the plus key, you can go to tools, add an account, lots of different ways. There are thousands of different, 14,000 plus supported institutions. So there is about a 95%, 99% chance that it will cover your institution. Just a little note about that. It doesn't work well, in my opinion, with mortgages. Uh, so if you have a mortgage, sometimes that's a little bit tricky. Um, but Brokerage, no problem. Banks, no problem. Credit cards, it works the best with. Everything needs a little bit of manipulation. You have to kind of understand stuff. Sometimes if you're a complex investor, it might not understand shorts and margin accounts and things like that. But for most most people, most usage, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. So let's say we have a Citibank bank account. And we type in our bank account and we say Citi and then we're gonna follow the prompts. It's saying Quicken Classic uses Intuit to connect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect, and what it's going out is doing, and it's gonna ask us to log in to Citibank with our credentials and authorize Citi to talk to Quicken. So it will ask, do you have permission? Once you've assigned permission, it says, great, everything has been added successfully. You'll be redirected back into Quicken. It will download all the transactions into Quicken. Now, most banks go back a long time, you know, a year or two years or as long as you need to. Some of them will only go back 90 days. If that's the case and you want more data, well, then you might have to download manually using a QIF file. But that's kind of not necessary for most people. This is where we would nickname it. So let's call this the city checking. And that's too many letters. So I just call it CHK. And I don't like X's. So I'll just put a dash in there, 2478. I do like to have that in as the last four digits. And when I select the name of the account, 
I will now have one account in my account list. It will bring in a whole bunch of my recent transactions and I'll be able to code them. Was it gas? Was it expenses? Was it a utility? Was it a mortgage payment? How does it work? And then of course it will have my balance on there and you can see all of the activities, Zells and cash and bank cards and payments and things like that. Now right now they're not tr tr traded, they're not coded, but they will be. To follow us on future videos as we explore more of the many features in Quicken, such as adding categories, tags, customized reporting, the password vault, the lists and functionality will go on and on. In the meantime, if you have any questions, you can visit us at quickencoach.com or sundialvfo.com. Thank you.